I think it's possible that Bible scholars missed this one because I've never heard of this book before. This is the Book of Clarence. It's uh, written and directed by Gene Samuel, and I bought it because it was cheap enough off of the uh, Apple Store, and uh, it was Sony. Uh, so, uh, you know, the fact that it has audio description on Apple was just a blessing in disguise. <laughs> um, so, and anyway, rather than mess, rather than figure out whether or not it was ever going to have audio description when it goes to Netflix, probably later, uh, like Gran Turismo, and it took like months for that to get audio description. I just went, eh, whatever. So, I'm a big fan of Gene Samuel. I like The Harder They Fall. Thought it was a good film. So, click subscribe because this is going to lean positive. Uh, to Gene Samuel, because I think the man is talented, and I think he makes bold choices and big swings, and that's the kind of thing that you need in a director. You need a director who is willing to take a vision and try to put it on camera and show it to the world, and that's definitely what he does with the Book of Clarence. Um, this film has a really interesting cast, um, full of very talented actors. So, uh, Lakeith Stanfield plays Clarence, as well as Clarence's identical twin, Thomas. Um, and we've also got R.J. Kyler. I always want to say R.J. Seiler, but I've heard R.J. Kyler enough now that I'm like, it must be R.J. Kyler, and I've just been messing up his name a lot. So I apologize to R.J., who I've been a fan of since me and Earl and the Dying Girl. Um, and we've got uh, Anna Diop, who uh, did Nanny a little while back. I don't know if you guys saw Nanny. She was pretty good at that. Uh, Tiana Taylor, who killed it last year in 1001. That was really good. We got good talent here. We're just working our way up. We got Alfre Woodard. Uh, I, no explanation necessary, but if you haven't seen Clemency, watch Clemency. Uh, Omar Sy, it's a great, great actor. The Untouchables. Uh, yeah, anyway, we're stacking the cast. I'm just going through here. James McAvoy. Uh, it's James McAvoy. Uh, he's one of those actors that I feel like should have been nominated for an Oscar, but hasn't been because he did have The Last King of Scotland. It does kind of feel like he should have gotten the supporting actor nod for that, but he didn't. Uh, Bennett Cumberbatch, who actually is an Oscar nominee. Um, we've got, uh, who else is in here? Caleb McLaughlin from Stranger Things, uh, who was also really terrific last year in a film that I'm sure nobody saw called Shooting Stars. Um, Marianne Jean-Baptiste, uh, who... Uh, is also a really solid actress. She's got another film this year that she could easily be getting some Oscar buzz for. So, yeah, this is a this is a pretty stacked cast. I'm sure I probably left somebody out, but um, just to give you the the rundown of why you should see this film, the cast is is pretty terrific. Um, as far as the film itself, it tonally has problems. It just does. Um, it, it, it's not what really sure what it wants to be. And that's probably where Gene Samuel has the biggest problem is how funny is this supposed to be? How satirical? How is it Mel Brooks's Brooks, Brooks ish type of comedy? Good Lord. It's hard to turn that man's last name into something. Um, or is it, like, uh, a little bit smarter? A little bit, it's like, sorry to bother you. You know, it's a little bit smarter, uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge type comedy. It kind of blends both and mixes it a little bit along with just sort of just telling the story as it is. Just, like, kind of straight storytelling. Um... 
And because of that, that's sort of where the Book of Clarence kind of gets jumbled, is that it never really feels like it has one consistent tone. It kind of feels like Gene Samuel just kind of went with uh, whatever the mood struck him that day. Um, or maybe this film just went through a lot of edits. I don't know. Uh, but it, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't quite flow. It doesn't have the flow to it. Uh, this film, I remember seeing it and being interested in it and looking it up and everything because it was originally sort of on the buds list of potential Oscar con contenders because of Gene Samuel, because of The Harder They Fall. And I looked it up and I saw who was in it and I was like, oh wow, yeah, this, this could be really cool. Then it got pushed out of 2023, and it got pushed right into the beginning of 2024, which is never a good sign. You never want to be one of the first movies out of the gate in 2024. That's, like, that's a studio just being like, you know what? I don't like you. I just don't. We're, we're, we're breaking up. <laughs> and they put you in the beginning. Um, it tells the story of Clarence, who's, like, the identical twin of Thomas, who's one of Jesus' apostles, and um, he has sort of a, I don't know, not great life, and at first he wants to, he asks his brother, identical twin, so himself, Lakeith, talking to Lakeith, uh, you know, why can't I be one of the apostles? Why can't I join? And Thomas is like, I would rather quit following Jesus than let you follow him. I'm like, I feel like that's not the point of the message of what Jesus is trying to <laughs> Um, But anyway, some mixed messaging here because it, just for me, there were times where I was like, I don't, I get that this brother doesn't like think his brother is anything, but also does he understand what the point of what he's doing is? Anyway, um, very weird. He also has some just really hilarious conversations, though, with people. Um, like Clarence uh, decides later on that since he can't follow a prophet, he will become a prophet. So he goes and he tries to uh, ask Mary, uh, Jesus' mother Mary, um the Virgin Mary, however you want to refer to her in this, uh, you know, how does your son do his tricks? And she just keeps trying to explain to him, they're not tricks, they are, they're real. He, he, that he, but he does his miracles. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, but, uh, but no, seriously, like, okay, so how does he, how does he do the, you know, like what, you know, and like he just keeps, and she just, it's a fun, it's a fun conversation because he's so dumb, <laughs> basically. Like, he thinks that it's impossible for, he thinks that the guy must be a charlatan. So, uh, so he's like, well, I can be a charlatan. And that's kind of where the movie takes off is, uh, he, he becomes renowned for also being a prophet because he, uh, gets his friends together and ha performs fake miracles on them. And, um, that is how he, uh, yeah, that's how he does it. And, um, he gets a following and people start knowing who he is and becomes a little bit of a problem for him when Judas, uh, starts noticing him. And then, uh, you get to eventually see the, uh, you know, I mean... There, there were other crosses that were up there. You know, there was Jesus and there, there were those other guys. And, uh, well, in, in this, this is kind of Clarence. This is Clarence's time to be, uh, you know, like, this is what you get for, for following. This is what your, your prophet story looks like is, is your, the future that you're headed for. And to see Judas betraying Clarence, who's not really a prophet, is... Anyway, it's all just trying to say something, but it's really hard to tell because, again, he has moments like where he li uses literal slapstick comedy. There's literally a slap in here that feels like he's making a commentary, like we're 
we're going to do slapstick. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And then there's other stuff that's very satirical. Stuff that reminds me a lot of Mel, the comedy and the humor of Mel Brooks. And then there's a lot of stuff that just feels like the Gene Samuel we fall in love with from The Harder They Fall, which is just, I'm telling a story from my unique perspective um, and shaking things up a little bit. I'm taking what you would normally see and telling it a little different way. And that's cool. And that's the kind of stuff that I like. Um, but one thing is true. The cast is absolute fire. I love this cast. This cast is amazing. Um, that none of them let me down. There wasn't a bad performance in this cast. And, um, that's what carries the film. The audio description is done by Adrian Barreau at, at uh, Media Access Group. They did a really good job with this film. Um, she does a really good job of describing all of the ins and outs and all of the miracles and uh, especially the big ones whenever they happen, whenever Jesus actually performs a miracle. Yes, Jesus shows up at some point in this film. Um, when he performs an actual miracle. For people who think that this film is made to make fun of Jesus, it's not. Um, I know it kind of seems like that because it's like, oh, it's the Book of Clarence. This is like some sort of blasphemous side project. Not really, um, because the biggest connection that they have is that he visits characters that you sort of know from the Bible, like the Virgin Mary, Mary Magdalene, uh, Thomas. Um, eventually Jesus shows up, but most of this is on somebody who sort of, in that time period, sees what Jesus is doing and says to himself, oh, I think I can do that too. And sort of the consequences of, of making those kind of poor life choices. <laughs> um, pretending to be a false prophet. Which, if anything, is it's pretty, pretty certain that's a commandment. So, if anything, the community should be down for this. Because it's not like he's rewarded for being a false prophet. So, um, yeah. There you go. Book of Clarence. It's a weird film. It's, uh, it's a film that is not going to be for everybody. Not everybody's going to like. But uh, I like that Gene Samuel took a risk. I like that Gene Samuel, for his first film, he did a black western. And then for the second film, he's doing, like, the this missing part of the Bible. Quote-unquote missing part of the Bible. Um, and it just makes me think, what is his next film going to be? And I'm still really interested in that. So I'm still really interested in Gene Samuel. Um, and the cast is really great. Lakeith Stanfield is still a fantastic actor. So, you know, no harm, no foul here. Uh, I did enjoy large chunks of this film. I do think it's a little messy, though. So when it all comes down to it, I'm probably going to say Book of Clarence gets a B-. minus. That's it. So... Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for clicking that subscribe button, and I will watch something else and see you guys on the other side.